İkinci e, session e, maliyyə planlaşdırması e, və e, budgeting e, büdcə e, olacaq. E, mən ikinci sessiona başlamadan e, öncə bir e, summary kimi e, birinci sessionda öyrəndiklərimizi summary halında step by step e, necə istifadə edə bilərsiniz onu e, deyim. Break up'da e, dostlardan biri sual verdi. Biz deyək ki yeni bir layihədə yeni başlayır və investment e, analizlər bilmir necə investment analizlər aparasıyıq və deyilib ki e, hər hansı bir nəsə istehsal edəməlisiniz, nəsə invest edəməlisiniz. Sıfırdan necə başlayaq? E, sıfırdan necə başlayaq? Bu sual e, ki, Business Case Competition'da da sual veriləcək sizə və ehtimal deyiləcək, bunun üstündə planlar hazırlayın. Və e, ilk step e, nə, nə olmalıdır? İlk step e, presentation'da göstərdiyimiz kimi 5 e, core e, point'a fokus olmalınızdır. Consumer Understanding, e, Branding Innovation, Go to Market and Scale, e, Yəni, bu produkt, mən hər hansı bir nəsə istehsal edəmək istəyirəm və yaxud da ona bir need varmı e, və e, bütün bunları hansı formada eləyəcəm, e, nə cür innovation olacaq, go to market necə olacaq və bunlar təyin olduqdan sonra iki ki suala cavab ver verməli olarsınız. Where to play, how to win, harda oynamaq və necə udmaq. E, bu iki suala cavab verirsiniz və ondan sonra başlayır analizlər. Deyək ki, innovation olacaq, bu qədər investment olacaq, ondan sonra başlayırsınız bunun sizin o marketlər, hansı marketlər girəcəksiniz, o ma girdiyiniz marketlərdə competition-ın e, cari vəziyyəti, hansı portfeyl-lə iştirak edirlər, siz hansı çox önəmli price-lə girəcəksiniz, qiymətlə girəcəksiniz, çox önəmli point-dir və o e, aldığınız, girdiyiniz price-lə sizin e, Financial'lar necə olacaq, e, bunları e, ölçürsüz e, və e, ongoing investment'lar e, necə olacaq, investment'lar payout olacaq mı, olmayacaq mı və step-step bu şəkildə gəlinir. E, bu belə. İkinci mövzu financial planning, budgeting. E, əslində bu session biraz daha qısa olacaq, birinci session'a baxdığımızdan. E, müqayisə edədiyimizə üçün ki, otaq temperaturu artıq sərindir, yaxşı. E, çünki bu çox önəmli mövzudur. Financial planning, budgeting. E, bu e, niyə görə önəmlidir? E, nə fikirləşirsiniz? Niyə görə financial planning, budgeting önəmlidir? Any ideas? Okay. Liquidliyin qorunması sonra? Risk play 3 4 Sonra That's all Okay Düzgün qeyd elədiyiz Ümumiyyətlə ora gəlmədən qaba Financial planning nədir? What is financial planning? Financial planning Forecast This is all about forecast projection So Before starting investment, before starting an operation, so you forecast your financials, you forecast your business, you project your financials and business. This is first. Second, uh, company, why forecast is important? First point, uh, you need to know what will be your company financials. So where you want to go, where you want to achieve. This is second point. Third point, uh, there are external and internal needs that you need to address. This is very, very important. 
what are external and what are internal points. First, your shareholders as an external. Okay, so your shareholder, as we talked in the first presentation, first part, your shareholder expect you some return. So you forecast, you promise that it will come. Second, investors. Okay, so your investors, the guys who is buying your stocks, invest the company, they expect the same things so that uh, this money will be paid out. Third, Wall Street analyst. Okay, so at the end of the day, while your quarter, while your basically year end, you have some actuals. Then it should match with your forecast. So, and they, they are Wall Street analysts who is analyzing your performance and uh, commenting is this company reliable company, delivering the commitment, etc. So, second part, the you guys thought are all internal needs. So, why uh, forecasting is important? Because decision making, as you told, so uh, if we know all financials, all uh, numbers, all plans in advance, we would have better decision making. It would have uh, stewardship. So, meaning if we if we know where we are going and what we expect, so and if actuals come, so that means you are better in uh, business management and uh, uh, it is well organized. And at that level, uh, all your stewardship point is clear, and there is no any uh, black and white part. And why forecast is important? Coming to external focus. Okay, this is uh, just only promise of high return. So, beginning of the fiscal year, you promise something. So, you come, you invest, and you hear about the commitment. Companies say, basically, we will deliver this amount of money if you invest. Uh, and if you deliver, that means you keep your profit. So the guy can invest further in the second year plus credibility so wall street analysts commenting on how the company performing how the actuals comes and uh, if this is credible uh, company or not if this is reliable company to invest uh, is this recommended company to invest or not so these two end up with high stock prices in the market so as as you deliver your forecast, as you deliver as actuals utilizing and coinciding with your forecast, so you will for sure your stock prices increasing in the market year on year. This is why forecast is important. And while you're building your uh, basic analysis, you need to forecast. You need to have not only year one, five year, ten year you need to forecast. So you need to show uh, where I'm going and behind what? What are the sup supporting plans? Here, why forecast is important in internal perspective? As you told, better decision making. Second, optimization of the resources, meaning you have some resources, 10 resources on hand, and you know where you go. Uh, you utilize your resources uh, in advance. Uh, mostly your uh, human resources, production resources, etc. Early identification of the gaps, as you mentioned uh, correctly. So you see, you uh, you promised a ten year glide path for the investors, and uh, year on year you are basically forecasting your financials, uh, and you see where you are versus your initial forecast and is there any gap that you need to address or close or not and better understanding of the issues so uh, if you forecast you you will have better understanding why it's not coming what was wrong with my forecast so this is uh, this is uh, very important and consequence of the missing financial commitment so if you forecast and you don't deliver your forecast so what would happen okay so difficult gap closing decision, then you will have, uh, you will be in rush and you will not correctly address your gap closing, then not enough funds to implement plans because 
uh, you already spend on your budgets. So the more budgets you spend, the more gap you have. Uh, that not, not delivering commitment to Wall Street. Uh, this is this is also a uh, point. And as a result, you are on declining trend. So your stock shares decline. Your investor uh, refuse investing more. So you you need to sell shares to improve the, uh, as you, we mentioned, cash flow. You need to sell your assets. You need to sell your brands, or you need to sell the company at the end. So this is this is second part, important part. Then financial planning cycle. Okay. So this is. Uh, this, this will give a sign for you to imagine how financial cycle is built overall for the companies. So that while you forecast your financials, so you know what kind of the steps, which steps you need to pass away uh, to, to build the financials. First, long term financials, okay? So while you, while you build on your plans, so you need to have long term first first of all in 10 years or in 5 years where I want to come I will be this is first uh, second what do we want to achieve in 5 years uh, what will be there this is first second is short term okay so first I forecasted my 10 years uh, financials and second uh, I, I want to forecast year one next year financials because 10 years uh, can seem sound magic for, for the investment and cannot be so much reliable. But if you for year one forecast is uh, more uh, accurate and more reliable since it is uh, only one year ahead and this is easy to forecast all the risk. Uh, what do we want to achieve? Balanced forecast. What we can achieve at, with the risk that uh, with, we accrued. Then financial forecast. Okay, what is the what is the difference between short term and financial forecast? Is because is that first uh, first you forecast everything year one, not only financials, because the finance part is only related with the numbers. Okay, so uh, what you do basically you forecast your financials, which is easy, but uh, difficult part how your financials build on. Uh, versus your plans. So, for example, what will be year one marketing strategy? What will be year one uh, go-to-market strategy? Okay. So, because due to this uh, strategy, you need to build on your activities. You need to focus your activities and address the consumer needs. So, then you can focus your financial. Okay, my year one initiative. Uh, activities will be this and for that I need uh, I'm expecting to get X dollar M or Y dollar profit uh, behind this then what comes is actuals okay so you long term forecast then you have year one forecast the same as the same as long term then you build your financials on your plans because the finance part is the only part that is that can be readable in numbers. All the plans can be readable in numbers. And what comes is the actual. So uh, is your actual coincide all that with your forecast? This is uh, overall cycle. And this is how uh, most of the companies uh, forecasting the uh, building their forecast and uh, planning uh, their budgets. Clear? This is very important part. Okay, uh, while talking uh, on forecast, I mean, what is forecast? Basically, uh, you can ask, right? So, okay, what I can, what should I do? What is forecast? How can I forecast, etc. Okay, so forecast shouldn't be uh, just uh, saying, okay, I can deliver x x uh, dollar of profit in year one, y dollar of profit in year two, but it is more on building blocks. Here it is written, basically, in which category you are playing in. So small cars, big cars, I don't know, Y cars, whatever. These are your category. And it has some building blocks. So what are the building blocks that will deliver your forecast? So these uh, basically are key building blocks that 
many of the companies using. First, market growth. What does this market growth? Is meaning how your market will grow, how your GD, uh, GDA will grow, uh, GDP will grow. Meaning, if there there was ten people eager to buy car, so in the year one there will be fifteen people eager to buy car. So this is your market is growing, people earning more money. And you need to forecast what can be your uh, market growth. Uh, market growth is up to profit of the people, income of the people at the end of the day. If people GDP growth is 10% or 5%, 5%, it is difficult that you can forecast 10% growth. How come your GDP is growing by 5%? How people can buy, increase their profit by 10%? Okay, so it should be linked. Second, pricing SRM, strategy revenue management and pricing. So, uh, okay, I have uh, X uh, number of consumer uh, and X Y dollar M uh, revenue. So, how I can increase it without, with or without increasing market share? It can be pricing. For example, if you sell uh, one dollar, one product. So, if Next year, if you sell the same product with two dollar, so that means you will you will earn more. Or if you sell more premium products in year two, that that means your market will not change, but people will be up tier upgrade so that they will buy more premium products. And uh, it also linked with GDP growth, inflation, all kind of uh, uh, data and. Mostly, this market growth is prepared by marketing people. Uh, this uh, and together with uh, consumer management team, they know all the consumer. They know life of the consumer. They know how the same guy can invest next year. Uh, they know the purchase parity power. So, this is second. Your share growth is the third part. What does this mean? This means if market is 10 people uh, and uh, I'm selling five items to 10 people, okay? That means the rest five item is sold by different companies or your competitive competitor, right? So that means can you, this is very, very important part, I underline, uh, how can you cannibalize? Okay, your market is not changing. Azerbaijan is 9 million people and it will not be 100 million people in year one. Okay, so it will be 9, 9.5, whatever. But uh, you need to sell your products more. Okay, so market growth can be 1, 2%, but uh, share growth can be much more or higher because 5 million, you were selling products to 5 million, but the rest, 4 million, was occupied or was... Uh, captured by competitors. So that means there are no more people that you can sell, but there are people that has an opportunity to sell your product versus competition. Okay, so uh, for, for this, you need to know your competition. So uh, what, who is your competition? What are their shares? Why they sell? What portfolio they have? How they sell? So this kind of question you need to address so that you be sure uh, what, what, what up until which limit your uh, share uh, would grow. The uh, fourth one is white space. Okay, white space. What does this mean? This means uh, you you bring new products totally that you were not in. For example, uh, you were at soap market, washing hands soap market, and uh, you want to bring some. Uh, shampoo, for example, there are soap is hand washing, but shampoo is hair washing, right? So you cannot wash your hair with soap or vice versa. So this is new category. So you were not in with soap in the market with soap at that level, but with shampoos, you enter new market, white space. So there is also competition. You need to carry all the same analysis. And then other, other, uh, any, uh, anything, uh, unexpected uh, opportunity risk, someone can 
uh, go out of market, some crisis can happen, XYZ. You can put it some uh, risk uh, premium, for example, to be safe in hand. So. Okay, meaning uh, white space market is not changing, market is the same, uh, but you were playing with three products, two products, okay, soap and, uh, uh, I don't know, shampoo, you were playing with soap and shampoo, so, uh, but you were not playing with uh, pampers in the market, okay, there were uh, baby diapers in the market, but you, you you didn't have, you were not having this baby diapers in the market. What you do basically, you bring diapers to the market. So that means these are different products. This is white space that you entered. Okay, so you were not having, now you have. So then you can grow your share market, uh, you, you can have pricing, etc. But this is totally new category that you are in, not the country uh, is changing. This is uh, that. This is very important because uh, while building your forecast, you need to you need to show your building blocks. Okay, so why I will grow X index, Y index. So you need to know behind what, and each of these linked to data, statistical data, or analytical data, not just. Uh, I assume, I forecast, whatever. As to what market rules, you need to know your GDP. SRM pricing, you need to know how people can spend. They, you need to know their purchase power. power. The share growth, you need to know what is your share, basically. Uh, white spaces, you need to know your port competitive uh, portfolio. Uh, and accordingly, you can forecast your uh, initiatives. Okay, so while building, saying that, okay, my share is X percent, I want to take it X plus Y percent, okay? Uh, so behind that, you need to have supporting plans, okay? What are the supporting plans? Basically, uh, if consumer uh, washing the clothes in uh, 15 degree, okay, I will upgrade them, or washing in 30 de degree, I will upgrade consumer uh, is their life bringing new products that can wash the clothes in 15 minutes with 15 degree that will consume less electricity that will add more benefit and that will ease their life okay so this is how it should be linked basically is this clear All right then budgeting so this is short, all is up to on forecasting site. So this is your forecast. Uh, and we know how it is built, uh, how it is uh, end up written. Budgeting, it should have, it should be activity based, as I told. So uh, according to the forecast, according to your activity, that you need to spend some money, right? You need to invest and uh, you need to know how much you invest, you need to budget, you need to know at the beginning of the fiscal year or at the beginning of the year, this is the amount that I need to invest into this activity uh, and uh, you need to track that this amount is not uh, underspent or overspent, so because at the end it has some uh, promise, uh, return promise uh, shareholder, it should have Backup plan, this is very, very important while preparing your, uh, preparing for, for the business case, uh, you need to have a backup plan, okay? So every time, so because if the plans doesn't pay out or if, uh, if it is collapse, I don't know, whatever happens, so you cannot succeed with the existing plans, what would be your backup plans uh, to secure your equity? on the market. So uh, if you enter with some products, this people didn't get your products well and they refused getting products, but it can both impact your future entrance in the market, 
plus your current portfolio in the market. So for that, you need to uh, you need to have backup plan. This is this is very important, and it should be proven with uh, proper calculation. So uh, while having some budgets, it should have proper uh, calculation methods. Why this budget? If this budget is this payout, not payout. So how you can uh, generate more money with uh, less budget? So these are the important question. And for example, an activity example. What are the activities? Like this kind of the pictures. So uh, like this kind of the pictures, uh, activity in the beach, whatever. So and it has some time limit, meaning you do one activity in summer, you do one in winter, other in spring, whatever. So this is activity. And uh, you may heard Başama Gasha Nökte as, for example. Right? So one interesting fact before closing the uh, discussion, presentation. These are the 18 company, okay? 18 company that exist nowadays in Fortune 500 top list. The youngest one is 1941-45, the oldest one is 1812. So these companies, only 18 companies left, uh, over 500 in Fortune, uh, and these are the international companies. Okay, so you know why they exist in the market? Why? Uh, because because these companies have better planning, better budgeting, better forecasting, better strategy, and these are the companies serving basically for the people. So this is uh, just uh, for your info as an interesting fact, and uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.